Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It's nine o'clock on a Sunday, which means it's time for a review show special. Now, this is where I take a particular creator or a particular product or a particular company and I kind of do a deep dive into what they do. And what I try to do a lot of the time on the review show specials is I either look at something that's brand new that everyone's talking about or I look at a creator that maybe you're not aware of their products or their releases because they kind of go a little bit under the radar. And that's what I'm doing today. Today, I'm going to have a really good look at some of the lesser known items by one of my favorite magicians, the legend that is Cody Fisher. If you're a stage magician, this is something that you really want to pay attention to. So the question is, who is Cody Fisher? Well, I, I've reviewed quite a lot of Cody Fisher items on this uh, on this channel over the last couple of years. Uh, most recently, the Impossible Box 2 got a review on the Craig and Ryland Review Show. Uh, about a year ago, we reviewed His Her, which was an incredible version of uh, uh, sort of the uh, Red Hot Mama Chicago opener style routine with a twist. Uh, and that went out through Penguin Magic. But Cody's been bringing out tricks for years, like his killer prediction is something that I do in a lot of shows, and I have done ever since it's come out. As well as killer prediction, I uh, Cody's comedy book test is brilliant. His rope routine is fantastic. Um, but you know what? Those are all the items that have gone out through Murphy's. Uh, so a lot of people are aware of his killer prediction. A lot of people are aware of various different routines that Cody does. But Cody has a lot of stuff that goes out directly through his website. And the only way you can get that is if you regularly have a look on his website and you, uh, you may be on his mailing list or something. Um, and the thing you need to know about Cody Fisher is he is a worker. Everything he brings out is super commercial. Now, uh, he brings out close-up magic, absolutely. But I think a lot of people are, uh, think of Cody as a stage magician. Uh, and understandably, he's made a career for himself as an incredible stage performer. And, and some of my favourite pieces in my stage show and in my parlour show and in my platform show are Cody Fisher routines. It's not to say he hasn't brought out some great close-up magic. He has. But on this video, I'm going to be focusing primarily on his stage magic. Now, I've been a big fan of Cody Fisher for years. This is going to be an unbiased review. He doesn't even know I'm doing this. But I've been a fan of Cody Fisher for years in my kids' show. I do a routine called Three Kid Monty, which is uh, which is Cody Fisher's um, handling of the of the um, the color coloring book, and that's the thing with Cody. One thing that he seems to have the ability to uh, to do is to take existing routines that maybe have been around for a very long time and breathe new life into them. And one of the things that you're but he reminds me a little bit of Scott Alexander. In that one of the things that you're buying when you spend money with Cody Fisher, you're not just buying a trick. You're buying a full routine. Everything has been fought out to the nth degree. You know those tricks that come out, and I've talked about them before on the channel, they're brain farts. You can tell that they've never been worked in in the real world. That's not the case with Cody Fisher. You've normally got a PDF that you can download that's a full script uh, so you can see exactly what he does in his show and why he does it. And a lot of the time there's live performances as well. So Cody is an incredible magician. I think we've established that. A lot of the stuff that um, uh, Cody puts out, you can only get directly from his website. So a lot of people aren't aware of his material. So without further ado, let's have a look at some Cody Fisher items. Um, that if you're a stage or a platform magician, you absolutely want to be having a look at because these are gold. So first of all, we're going to be looking at Cody's version of Any Card at Any Number. And this is the Any Card at Any Number book, which is Cody's version of Any Card at Any Number based on a Joshua J plot. Now, this is worth its weight in gold. One thing that uh, Cody seems to do really well is he seems to put routines together that pack small and play big. Imagine just putting this into your case and having a five or a six minute routine that will play to a massive audience. Well, that's what you have with this. Um, this will play to a huge audience. And, and you're going to see this as a recurring theme throughout all the reviews. A lot of the stuff that Cody does, you're gonna, you, get, you can do it. You know, it really does pack small and play big. And that's important. I speak to a lot of close-up guys and their goals in 2023 are to put a cabaret show together or to put a small parlor show together. And one of the ways to do that is to upsell people that are booking you for close-up magic to do a sort of a 10 or a 15-minute floor show at the end. And in order to do that, you're going to need stuff that will play big, 
that, uh, that you can throw in the boot of your car or throw into your close-up case. This is the perfect example. This is a version of any card at any number, but with a twist. Uh, and the twist is that it's all to do with this book. Now, depending on how you do this, you're not going to, uh, you're not going to need anything else but the book. Uh, there's various different handlings. In fact, the way that Cody suggests doing it, you don't even have a deck of cards or anything. You just have the book. The idea is that, uh, and you're going to see a performance of this in a second, but the idea is that you talk about the any card at any number plot. And the idea is that it's an, uh, it, it, someone names a card, someone names a number, and the card appears at that number. And then you say, well, what we're going to try and do here is something a little bit different because this is 52 amazing card tricks. And uh, there are 52 amazing card tricks. And one of those card tricks in this book is the any card at any number. Then you ask somebody to name a number. You ask somebody else to name a card. And uh, that person names a number, that person names a card. And you say, interesting, let's go to uh, that number. So you said, what did you say? 30. Okay, so let's go to, um, let's go to trick number 30. They go to trick number 30. And, uh, and you point, you show all the other, uh, you show all of the other tricks in the book and they can see that every other trick in the book uh, has different names to it and they really do. And then you look at number 30 and that is the any card at any number, which is great. You bring a person up on stage with you, you do this, it'll kill them. And then you show that there's a post-it note on the page and the post-it note has the name of the card that they've, uh, that they named as well. And all it needs is this book and that's it. Uh, now, that's the, the handling that Cody suggests that you use. And it's like a one hour video plus a PDF uh, with a ton of different ideas. And that's one of the things that Cody does really well. He gives you a lot of bang for the buck. He gives you a lot of ideas, a lot of routines, a lot of different ways of doing things. Um, the way that Cody suggests doing it is not the way that I've been doing it. And the reason is uh, Cody uses a particular gimmick, which is not included in the uh, in the package that I've never really got on with. I don't want to say what the gimmick is, but it's a gimmick that I've never really got on with. And it's one that I've actively avoided in every different uh, performance that I've ever done. It's something I've actively avoided other than one thing, which we will get to. Um, so I, I didn't want to go down that route. So instead, I went for a different handling because Cody has five or six handlings. The reason I'm telling you this is you're going to see a performance in a second. And... Um, the performance you're going to see is me doing this trick and I use a pack of cards and it's one of the handlings that Cody suggests. I think it's the third or the fourth handling. Now this uses a pack of cards um, that you give the spectator to shuffle at the very, very beginning, which is totally not an issue. Uh, it's not a problem giving a deck of cards out to be shuffled. If it's not a problem using a deck of cards with this, Cody likes the other handling because there's no cards in play and I totally understand that. Uh, but I prefer this handling uh, out of all of the different handlings that Cody shared. So with that in mind, let me just show you a performance of this so you can see exactly how it how plays. Jack? How you doing, Jack? You okay. I'm good. Good. So I've got two things here. I've got a book and a pack of cards. First of all, before I go anywhere and do anything, I want you to mix these cards up. Make sure that they're all mixed up. Make sure they're all um, in a random order. Open it up. Now, while he's doing that, I'm going to tell you about a, a particular trick. Now, you watch a lot of magic, so you might have heard of this trick before. It's called the any card at any number. That name does ring a bell. Yeah, well, the idea of this trick is really simple. The idea is somebody names a card, somebody names a number or a position in the deck. And then when they deal through the cards, the card at that position is the card that they named. Um, interestingly, it's a very difficult trick. Very few magicians do it. Very mag few magicians know it. One of the best versions of any card at any number is in this book, 52 Amazing Card Tricks by Ed Verner. Nice. Um, there is a version of any card at any number in here amongst the 52 tricks. So before I go anywhere further, name a number from 1 to 52. Uh, 36. Are you sure? Yeah. Now, you can change your mind if you want to. I don't want you saying later on, I made you pick 36. Are you happy with 36? I like 36. And likewise, I want you to see that you've given these a really good shuffle. They're in no particular order. These cards are really mixed up. Would you agree? Yeah. Good stuff. Now, I want you to cut the cards. You can cut shallow. You can cut deep. You can cut wherever you want to. Cut some cards onto there. Okay. Excellent stuff. And we'll mark the cut. Let's just recap. This book has been here from the very beginning. Yeah. There's 52 card tricks in this book, Jack. 52 card tricks. One of them is any card at any number. You named any number. You named 36. You then cut to any card from a deck that you shuffled. This was the card that you cut to. Would you agree? Yeah. We're not going to look at it. We'll put it right there. I'm just going to find trick number 36. It was 36 that you said, wasn't it? It was, yeah. 
36. Now, before I show you 36, I'm going to show you something else. Let me show you 37. Trick number 37, can you see that there, my micro? Is the triple card revelation. I want you to see that fantasy card is 38. 39 is marked aces. Uh, 40 is traveling cards. 41 is acrobatic jacks. Each one of these is completely different, right? Yeah. Likewise, let me show you, I, I don't want to show you 36 yet because I want to show you some others. Have a look at this. Trick number two, twisting the aces. Uh, the clock card trick, one marked card. Pocket trick location. Uh, if you'd said 11, that's three thought off cards. If you'd said 15, that's jumping jacks. 19, invisible card prediction. 22, two card Monty. 25, calendar cake. You get the points. Different ones. Yeah, di they're all different names of tricks. But you said 36. Yeah. And what's really interesting is 36 Fuck is off. the any card at any number. What? But here's the interesting thing. I'm holding this, this, this book kind of weird. And the reason I am is because I'm covering something up. You cut to a card. You cut to the Jack of Clubs, didn't you? Jack for a Jack. But what's really interesting is this is the only page with a post-it note on it. And the post-it note is... Fuck off. The Jack of Clubs. Trick number 36, any card at any number, the Jack of Clubs. Mike, what just happened? I have no clue. <laughs> That's brilliant. Now, obviously, that was done in a close-up situation, and this is something that you could absolutely do close-up. Uh, this, this would work great. You know, you carry this around, you put it down on the table, uh, and, uh, and, and if you want to go into this routine, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Or you could put this somewhere in the venue, uh, out the way, like behind the bar or, or behind the DJ's booth. That's one thing that I do an awful lot. If I'm doing a, a, a cocktail or banquet tables, and uh, there's a big trick that I'm planning on doing sporadically through the night, I'll ask the DJ or the bar staff if I can keep it out the way. And then if I get a really good table and I go, hey, do you want me to do one last thing for you? Hang on, I just want to grab something, one second. And I'll go and get that thing and go back and show them one last thing. That's what I'd probably do with this. I'll put it to one side and I'll bring it out when I need it. Because there's no angle issues really to speak of with this. Um, so you could do this banquet. You could do this close-up if you wanted to. I think this is great for a parlor show. This is great for a, uh, a stage show. This is great for a cabaret show. Uh, I love the hook. I'm sure this could be actually combined with an actual any card at any number. Uh, I'm thinking of ways that I can actually combine this with the quantum deck, which I think would be a really fun way of doing it. Um, but yeah, I mean, as it is, it's a great trick. I mean, it's a fantastic trick. And what a great hook. You know, I love the idea of, uh, and, and yeah, I love the idea of bringing somebody up on stage, having the book, giving them the book, telling them to hold on to it. And then once they hold on to it, ask them to name a number, have them pick a card, and you go, brilliant. And then, and then you've got that amazing moment where you go, okay, this one, well, let's have a look at this. I want you to confirm. And they can confirm that every single one of these tricks are completely different, which they are. And, and then you just show them the trick. And you've got the two beats. You've got the first beat of showing that that is the any card at any number. Then you move your hand out of the way and you show that the post-it note's there with the card written on it. Now, Cody talks about how you don't have to use a car, uh, use a post-it note. You can have a card in there. So you can talk about having a bookmark and having a bookmark in there. And when you turn to the trick, there's a card there and the card is the card that they named. This is killer. This is great. Uh, I love this. This is getting 100%. This is going straight into my act. I'm going to be getting a second one of these because I know I'm going to wear this book out. I know I'm going to wear this book out. This is one of my favourite things that I've seen in 2023, which is not saying much because it's obviously very early on in 2023. But if you're a stage or a cabaret performer or a parlour performer and you want something that's going to play to a big audience, this is it. And as I say, I love the idea of combining this on stage with the Quantum Deck or another version of any card at any number. I think that would be killer. So there you go. That's the first routine by Cody Fisher. It's highly recommended. Let's have a look at the next routine. Okay, so the next routine we're going to be talking about is the Broken Deck, again by Cody Fisher. And uh, this is Cody's handling of the old split deck. Now, Cody's got a couple of different versions of this out. Uh, this is the latest iteration that's come out just a few months ago or a year ago. And this is the broken, the split deck, which is basically, if you've ever seen the split deck before, it's a deck of cards that's split into two diagonally. And you have somebody take a card from one half, you have somebody take a card from another half, and they match. Now, what we have here 
is Cody's version of that. And Cody has made a number of improvements over the original. The big improvement is the script. He's taken this trick, which is designed really as a close-up trick, and he's elevated it so that it'll work fantastically in a family show. It'll work really well in a stage show. This will work really well in a kid's show. He's got lots of different moments with built-in comedy. Um, also, the deck, and you're going to see a performance of this in a second, but the deck hasn't been like cut diagonally. It's been cut in a way that makes it look like you've cut it in half. And th there's a reason for that. There's this really funny bit in in, uh, in Cody's performance where he has someone tap on it to make sure it's solid. And he has the other person tap on it. And when they do, they drop the deck onto the floor. And when they drop the deck onto the floor, uh, when you take it out and you look at it, it's been cut in two. It's been sort of ripped into two. Uh, and it's just that really funny moment. And uh, he talks about, and this is where his experience comes in, he talks about how to handle this from a choreography point of view for a man and a woman, and also in a kid show, if you've got like an adult and a kid. Uh, he goes through everything. There's no stone unturned. And then without giving too much away, but the deck is gimmicked in a very different way to the original split deck that makes it really, really fair and really, really clean. Now, if you don't know what the broken deck is, if you don't know what the split deck is, we're going to have a look at a performance of this right now. Let's have a look at performance of the uh, of the routine. Jack, how you doing, Jack? That was a very big cards, Craig. Uh, no, I've just got little hands. And Mr. Kill on Neil cards, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is uh, a jumbo deck of cards. It is real. Give it a good hit to make sure it's solid. Dude. Don't break them. You broke my deck. Oops. I hope you haven't broke my deck. These were really expensive. Do you know how much these cards are, Jack? These are not cheap. You better not have broken them. I've... Jack. Fucking hell, Mark. I don't know me on stream. <laughs> what have you done? Those gym sessions have hit hard, Jack. <laughs> Jack, what have you done? Oh, Jack, you're not even on stream. Jack, what have you done? You wrecked him, man. Okay, don't worry. I can I can improvise. I'm a pro. You don't um, have any problems when you hired me. Look, can you just just just, just give those a, just a, a little just just do that. I'll try not to break them again. Well, you've already wrecked it now. I mean, there's nothing else. That's lovely. Thank you. And do, just do the same with that one, Jack. This is ridiculous. It's very fragile. Okay. You know, when I say cut the deck, I don't literally mean cut the deck, Jack. What are you okay. talking about? Whack it. It's my fault. I shouldn't have asked you to help. <laughs> Come back, Michael, all is forgiven. Right, okay, so you're going to touch one of these cards. I'm going completely off script here. You can touch one card, any card that you want to, totally your choice. Oh, that one there, are you sure? Now, I don't want you saying later on, Craig made you pick that card. So if you want that card, that's fine. If you want to change your mind, that's okay. I'll stick with the broken card. Okay, so one card more, you've got a 10 or a 7. Or... You'll stick with the broken card. They're all broken, Jack, thanks to you. They're all wrecked. Okay, that one right there. And... Uh, do you want to shuffle them again or are you okay? I'm oh, okay. Yeah, which one do you want? That one. Oh, hang on. That one right there. Yeah. And again, do you want to change your mind? You can do if you want to, or if you're happy with it, it's it's I'm fine. Uh, I'm happy. Okay. And again, you could have had that one or that one or that one or that one. They're all different. You ended up with these two, right? <laughs> no one knows what this card is. No one knows what these uh, this card is. You shuffle this packet. You shuffle this packet. You picked any card out of this packet. You picked any card out of this packet. They're all completely different. Do you know what the weird thing is? What's that? And I don't understand how you did this. You're going to have to explain it to me later. I don't understand how these two cards match. I think they fit together. Um, okay. Isn't that good? Not really. Yeah, but they match on this side as well, oh, Jack. Shit. I mean, that's <laughs> absolutely impossible right there, mate. I've got no idea how that works. But if you figure it out, please can you let me know? I'll try. Thanks. That's just bonkers. So again, that was filmed in a uh, in a uh, in a studio setting, in sort of a close up setting. But really, even though you could do this close up, this is designed for a stage piece. This is something that again will pack small, play big. I mean, if you look at the first one, the any card at any number, the book, that's sort of a seven or an eight minute routine. This is like a five minute routine. Just with these two tricks, you've taken up almost no space in your case. And you've got like maybe a 12, 13 minute routine right here. that will blow away your audiences and really, really different to anything else out there. Um, I don't want to give too much away on the scripting. I don't want to give too much away on the performance, but the real gold that you're buying here is the script and the performance and the beats within that that really make this trick uh, amazing. It transcends it from a good trick to an absolute miracle. Like it's, it's, it's miracle class, it really is. 
Uh, and I love the way the deck has been split. I really do like that. I think that looks really good. Um, this is one that's going to go straight into my act as well. Uh, this is one that I'm going to start trying out in kids gigs. I love the idea of bringing the birthday kid up and their parents and doing this whole routine and talking about, hey, do, do you ever find that uh, you've got that? You get, you know, you're, because you're, you, this is your mom and because, the, you know, you guys are related, you're going to have this sort of weird relationship where you can kind of almost be in sync with each other. I know that sounds crazy, but let me prove that to you. I just think it's worth its weight in gold. Brilliant trick. Absolutely brilliant trick. And a massive improvement of the split deck, which I did for years. But the use of a jumbo deck, the use of all of the different changes that Cody has made to it, makes this... a a million times better it, by country mile. I'm going to give this 95%. It's really good. Again, if you want something that's going to pack small and play big, this is the one to go for. Let's have a look at trick number three. Okay, so the third trick that we're going to be looking at right now is Cody's version of the fill deck, but with a completely and totally different uh, method and a hook that you just won't see coming. So what is uh, the fill deck? So if you haven't seen the fill deck, it was by Trevor Duffy. And the whole idea is that you've got that really funny moment where you say, hey, um, I'm going to get you to name a card. Uh, I'm going to get you to think of a card. Are you thinking of one? I'm going to name that card. I name that card, um, you know, Phil. And they look confused and you go, what was the name of your card? And they go, Seven of Diamonds. You go, and you go yeah, it's Phil. And then you take the cards out and you show that their card is the only one with Phil written on the back. Now, that's how the original version plays, and it uses a very heavily gimmick deck uh, in order to achieve that particular trick. It's a, it's, a, it's a gimmick that a lot of people use in a lot of different ways now. Um, Cody's version is completely different. The deck, other than, other than a couple of cards, the deck is completely ungimmicked. Um, but it allows you to do basically the same thing. Now, he uses a jumbo deck, because obviously Cody is using this on stage. I'm not going to do a performance of this. Uh, I'm going to do a review show revisited at some point on this. And I'll get some performance footage of me doing it on stage. And I'll use that. But I'm not really going to do a performance of this. And the reason is, this really is a routine that is designed for stage. Because the thing that makes this is the track that you have with it. The music track that's included with the trick. Now, I know that sounds ridiculous. But let me explain the presentation of this. So Cody comes out on stage and he, uh, uh, he says, hey, I'm going to do some mind reading, there's some gags, there's some lines, there's some bits of business. He says he's going to do some mind reading. And uh, he asks somebody to name a card. And he says he's going to write down the name of their card. And he's got a pad in front of him. And he writes down um, uh, something. And he says, right, I think I've got your card. He turns the thing around and it says Fred. And he goes, there you go. Was that your card? And... They go, no, and you go, well, what was your card? And they go, King of Spades or whatever. And you go, yeah, that's Fred. That's the card. And they look confused. And then he goes, well, look, let me explain what I did. Uh, I, I, in lockdown, I actually named every single one of the cards in the deck. And each one of them has got a different name. And I actually wrote the names of the cards on the back of this deck. And as he says that, uh, he takes their card, the King of Spades, and he just puts it to one side on a little platform thing he just he just puts it to one side um so whatever card they name he puts to one side and then he says uh, I even wrote a song about it you know I was really busy in lockdown I even wrote a song about it and then he has uh the music played and as the music is played he displays the backs of the cards one at a time all the other cards in the deck and it's um so surreal <laughs> uh it's such a funny song it's like he's holding up hey uh it, it I I can't do it justice by telling you what the song is, but he's telling you this song and the song is naming the names that are on the back of the cards in order. So as the song says the name, he's showing the card and putting it down on the table in front of him. So he goes through every single card and then he says, hey, uh, you know, the last card is, there's this really nice way that the song ends, but basically the song ends by saying that the last card is Fred. And as he says that, he takes the King of Spades that they named, he turns it round and it's got Fred on the back of it. It's just the perfect example of how to take a trick and make it play to a thousand people by just slightly changing the way that you do it. Nobody in a million years would think that the original Phil routine would play to an audience the size that Cody does this to. And that's because it wouldn't. But the use of the jumbo deck, 
the change of the method to make it cleaner, um, the use of the song, all of these elements put together makes this routine absolutely genius. It really does. I mean, it's such a good routine. Uh, and it is another example of something that packs small and plays massive. Uh, in essence, all you've got is a card revelation here. But in reality, because of the song and everything else that's going on, it's a good five or six minutes of pure comedy that's just going to bring the house down. So, yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's the routine. I'm not going to do it uh, as a performance because I don't think I'd be able to do it justice in a studio environment. But I am going to do it at a gig and get you some performance footage so you can see exactly what it looks like. But for now, yeah. Uh, I wanted to show you that. That's killer. It really is uh, a killer routine. If you're looking for something that's a little bit different, a little bit quirky, packs small, plays big, then this is the perfect thing for you. Um, the song is well written. Uh, it's catchy. It's funny. It'll grab all the people uh, in the audience and it'll bring them in. There's nothing to not like about this. I'm going to give this 98%. This is another one that's going straight into my act. I think you're seeing a pattern right here. All of Cody's stuff is brilliant. Uh, we're going to finish off with one final Cody routine, a little bit different. This one, this is more of a um, this is more of a utility item. So the final trick that I want to share with you today is, uh, and the final trick that I want to talk to you about in this review show is uh, another trick by Cody Fisher, and basically it's a um, it's a bag. It's a bag with a mesh front. It's a little bit like the old fashioned um, sort of egg bags, the, the clear fronted egg bags, if you know the ultimate egg bag. Uh, or if you are familiar with my attack of the bag, uh, which I bought out probably about 18 years ago now. If you're familiar with that, it's a similar sort of gimmick, but the bag is much bigger and it's designed to produce anything. Uh, and the perfect use of this is to produce a pack of cards for an invisible deck routine. And Cody actually talks about how you can actually use an invisible deck um, in this and you can really elevate the moment of doing an invisible deck. And you'll see a performance of that in a minute. I'm going to perform that to you. But then Cody, as normal, goes through a million other ways of doing this trick. So you don't have to just use it as uh, the production of a deck of cards. You can use it to do anything. Uh, he talks about making eggs appear and doing it as an egg bag routine. I mean, the sky is the limit. There is so much you can do with this. Um, I like the idea, actually, and something I've been playing around with is making a five inch coin appear in it uh, or even a seven inch coin at the end of a coin routine. I mean, there is a lot you can do with this and it is very, very strong. So um, let's have a look at a performance of it. I'm just going to use it. Uh, the, the original reason that Cody put this together was for a invisible deck routine. And everybody who watches this knows that I love invisible deck. I've been doing the invisible deck for many, many years. My project visible was all about taking the invisible deck and going in a different direction with it. Having said that, sometimes just the classic invisible deck is a great thing to do on its own. So I'm just going to perform the classic invisible deck, but I'm going to use this so you can see exactly how this could be used. How are you doing, Jackie? Okay. What is that? It is a bag with a mesh like, front. It looks like a fishing boat. It's, a, it's got a bag with a mesh front so you can see inside it. And as you can probably see, there's a deck of cards in there. Do me a favour, Jack. Reach in. It's an invisible deck. Reach in and take out the invisible deck of cards. Oh, the reverse. There you go. Very good. Grab it. Take it out. Now, Jack, first thing I want you to do is give the cards a shuffle. You want me to open the package? First? It would help. Okay. Put the card box there. Give them a shuffle. You do that well. Good job. Excellent. Keep shuffling. I can do the fancy shuffle now. I know. Very impressive. I'm spending time with V, Matt. <laughs> and then what I want you to do is, when you're happy that you couldn't possibly know what the top card is, have a look at the top card. You can show it, Michael, if you want to, but don't show it me. Now, I'm going to look away. I want you to take that top card, turn it face up when I look away, because I don't want to see it, okay. and put it face up into the face down deck. Okay, have you done? Yep. Right, shuffle the cards one more time. And put them in the box. So, are you ready? On the count, no, hold the box. On the count of three, I want to throw the box at the uh, at the bag. One, two, three. Throw. Very good. That's very very good. Uh, you see, when you throw them, they become visible. 
and hopefully this has worked. Now you took one card out of the deck and you turned it over and put it back in. What was the card? Five of hearts. Was it really? Yeah. You saw it, Michael, it was the five of hearts. Yeah. And it wasn't a trick in invisible deck where they're all the five of hearts, they're all. Uh, not that cards. I noticed. Okay, good. <laughs> and you put it facing the other direction, didn't you? Yeah. Here's what's so weird about this, Jack. You're not gonna believe this, but there's one card and one card only that's facing the other direction. All these cards are face up. There's one card and one card only that's face down, which is this card right here. What was the name of the card again? Five of Hearts. Didn't you do well? I'm so confused. What just happened? <laughs> <laughs> so I've used this a couple of times now, and I've got to tell you, the reaction of the deck appearing inside the bag is as strong as the actual revelation of showing their card is reversed in the deck. Like, it is really strong. They just don't see it coming. And uh, Ryland saw this and was absolutely blown away by it as well. But having to order a second one because he wanted to put this into his show. Um, it's just it's just a really smart production of a deck of cards. Uh, it doesn't have to be used in an invisible deck. You can use it in one of a million different ways that Cody goes through with you. If you want to produce a deck of cards at the beginning of your act, this is a great way to produce a deck of cards at the beginning of your act. There's so many different ways that you can actually use this prop. It's great. Uh, it's very well made. Uh, you can be staring at that bag and you won't see anything. And it folds up as well with the item inside. So you could, if you wanted to, use this in sort of a banquet table situation. Um, it would fit into an inside jacket pocket fairly easily. So you can have this in an inside jacket pocket and if you wanted to do an invisible deck routine or in any other routine that involves the production of something, you could actually do that as well. So there's lots of different options with it, but I plan on using it on stage and so does Ryland. Uh, I'm gonna give this 100% as well, so this gets 100% from me. And I asked Ryland to give it a percentage, Ryland gave it 100% as well. Uh, we're both gonna be putting this into our act. It's, it's a great utility device. It's not a trick in its own right, but as you would imagine with Cody Fisher, he goes through everything with a fine tooth comb. So there's tons of different things that you can actually do with it. There's tons of different routines that you can do with it. Um, but frankly, if you're just going to use it as the production of a deck of cards in, in, a, in an invisible deck routine, that's just a great thing to do as well. So 100% from me. 100% from mine. So there you go, guys. That's another review show special in the bag. Do me a favor and go check out Cody's website. He's got some incredible items on his website. He is really one of the nicest people in magic and one of the most creative magicians. One of my favorite magicians as well. And his stuff is golden, as you can see from this review show. So do me a favor. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. You want to see more videos like this? Like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Now, I'm going to be back again tomorrow at 6 o'clock with another uh, Magic Live. I'm going to be back at 9 o'clock with another video. I think it's a 5x5 five five tomorrow. So look out for it. There's a load of stuff coming out. Um, but one more time, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Um, if you haven't already done so, I've got to mention it. Go and check out The Netrix. It's www.thenetrix.com. You can go check it out and see what all the fuss is about. And I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching. My name's Craig for Magic TV. Mm.